Alrighty, fellas. I'll talk about armored core. Just give me a second. Hopefully this sort of thing is interesting to you. So Mainly what's happening is I haven't been keeping up with it, but I knew it was coming. I heard about it like a couple of years ago. Armor Core 6 coming down the pipeline. And pretty much I started looking at videos today. Realized that it's actually coming out in a couple of days. So like the 24th, the 25th or something. So like three, four days. And... uh Basically, almost all of the content that I've seen over it so far has been from, like, big, like, really big streamers that play, like, World of Warcraft and stuff. Like, just random streamer people who haven't played the Armor Core games. And I thought that was a little odd. I know it isn't the most popular game in the world, but honestly, Armor Core is probably one of my favorite games. Um... Especially mech-wise. Like, out of all the mech games, it's probably my favorite. And kind of an example I can give to this is... I stopped playing single-player games a long time ago. I stopped playing single-player games in Halo, um, Assassin's Creed, all of that stuff. Because you would buy them, and then it literally it would be over, and then you would never play it again, and you'd waste like $80, right? Well, Armor Core, it's, it's really odd because the game itself really, like, it wasn't super crazy, right? But you get an urge to play it. The, like, your mech and your person become, like, part of you, almost. Like, it's weird because I never really have that urge. It's kind of like back in the day, like, GTA uh, San Andreas. Like, you would play it, and you get bored or something, and you just kind of, like, leave, and then you'd come back in, like, ten minutes because you had nothing to do, and you were bored, and you, like, felt like playing San Andreas again. It's, it's kind of like that kind of weird feeling, you know? It's like you just got gun playing Diddy Kong, and you're going to go, like, watch TV, but then you're like, oh, well, I, I kind of want to go back and play that Diddy Kong level. Um, Armor Core has a weird thing about it where it's like that. Like, I won't think about playing it for a long time and then all of a sudden I'll be like you know I should probably go find my old armor core and replay that game again and uh, it's one of the few games that actually does that for me um, but I will say that I didn't play all of the games so in my case these games were non-existent basically when I was growing up I don't recall seeing many of them at all um, the only mech games I recall when I was younger were like the computer games with like the giant walking mechs. And those don't really interest me at all. But what I will say is that in my mind when I think about Armor Core, it's like an adult, like an adult anime sort of vibe going on. Like, like people like the Gundams or whatever. Gundams in my mind is like Power Rangers. It's not like the actual, you look at the Gundam games, it's like this cartoony feel, kind of non-modular stuff going on. Um, the Armor Core is like actual, like, Armor Core is like Dragon Ball Z for mechs, you know? Like it's a Dragon Ball Z game, but like mech, sort of. And then, like, but the gameplay was always kind of weird. Um, so, it is one of my favorite games. Probably some of my top games that I enjoy. So, I'm definitely playing it. I definitely would suggest playing it. Um, if it's anything like the old ones. But, what I will say is, like, there wasn't, like, I'm not a, I'm not a person that's just going to hype up a game and sell it to you. And be like, oh, it's the best thing ever. It is one of my favorite games. In the past, though, like from what I can recall, 
it's more like the older games are more like the missions aren't super great. They're kind of like go and shoot. It's like a hack and slash with guns. You like run around and you just shoot stuff and blow it up. And then you have some boss battles. I would say it's kind of like more of an arcadey feeling Halo or something along those lines where like you're going around, you're shooting grunts and stuff. And it's kind of like, oh, I don't want to die to these grunts, but they're not really going to do much to you. And then you like make it to the end game where it's like, oh, there's a boss fight and you're trying to like Halo for me was more about the story than it was about anything else. So Halo is more storyline and PVP. That's kind of the same thing that I'm getting with like Armor Core. It's more of like the storyline is really freaking good and the PvP um, can be good. Uh, there is a few things that honestly, like just watching over a few of these videos, I think it's still, it's great they're bringing the franchise thing back and they're bringing back Armor Core. I don't like that people call it a Souls game. Okay, if anything, they should call, they should call the Souls games Armor Core games or like core games. Because Armor Core was here first, as far as I'm aware. That was the game that did everything. It had all the stuff that transitioned into the Souls stuff. So, I prefer to call these Core games and not Souls games. But, it's, it's in a weird spot for me because I'm happy they bring the game back. And I hope they keep making more, and I hope more and more people get on. This is the first release that's actually on PC. Like, I actively actually drug my uh, Xbox 360 back out that I hadn't played in years um, when I learned about Armor Core uh, 5. And so I actually played Armor Core 5 on Xbox 360 um, just for that. And I actually keep my Xbox 360 around only for that game. I got rid of every other game that I have. For that console and uh it doesn't do anything unless i happen to get the urge to try and replay that game um the thing with the armor core really like uh when i first started to play it basically i was looking for games and uh it's like one of the like one of the few times in my life i've ever been at a game stop and armor core 4 answer was like ten dollars or something at GameStop. And I was like, you know, that's different. Like, I've never seen anything like that. I've never heard of it. And, uh, great storyline. Like, the missions were just kind of, you don't necessarily want to replay the missions the whole time, but you do. Because you're like, oh, if I get get through this mission, I'm going to get to see, like, this new part of the storyline. Or I'm going to unlock this um, armor core part. Or, like, the different ratings that you would have to have. So, like, Armor Core for Answer was, like, one of the first games, or probably one of the only games, that I can recall having multiple endings. Like, I actually beat the game originally and then didn't realize that there was another ending to it. And then when I came back later and played it again, I got introduced to that second alternate ending, like, randomly. And I was like, whoa, what is this? And then I got to see the other side, and like that, like the game was awesome for doing that. There's like three endings or whatever, um, on like four answer. Uh, the the way that the people talk to you is like anime movie style. Um, the mech fights and stuff are always really good. All the arena fights and everything else. Um, what I am sad about with the new one coming out is looking at some video footage stuff. I, I feel like they could have pushed the bar a little bit more. So, whereas most of the people that see the game, they're looking at it and like, oh my god, this is awesome, or whatever. A lot of them are doing it purely for hype. They're trying to hype it up and like spark some interest on their channel so that they can actually go and play the game and like get views and stuff. Because it's not a very big fan base. And I'm probably going to be doing this like similar. I'm going to be going and playing on Twitch because I like the game. Um, but they don't have multiplayer, which I kind of wish that they would, you know, like co-op or something in the game would have been really cool. Um, even if they did like invasions, sort of like Elden Ring, like they could have brought that mechanic to armor core and it would have made sense to some degree. Um, you like, you're going and you're playing a mission and like a guy invades you. It would kind of suck cause armor core is kind of a rough game, but then like they added like, these healing packs and stuff from 
from uh, like Elden Ring, basically like the the flask thing where you get like three free heals and like free ammo and stuff. That I don't fully understand because unless they made the missions and stuff a lot more difficult, uh, I I just don't see a point. Or maybe they should just give us some bonus like things for not having to use them because um, I think they're trying to make the game more casual friendly in that sense but part of the old thing with armor core was like when you went to a mission you were in the mission like there wasn't nothing that you could really the ammo that you had the life that you had how you played all of it affected your game you know like you made one wrong move and you just lost like half your life and then you had to play the whole mission like you would go into a mission and fight your hardest and not take any damage and then lose at the end of the match and then have to go back and then come back into the mission and make a mistake of the first half of it and lose half your life, but somehow pull it out and like win win the match that time around. Like weird stuff like that would happen, you know. Um But from what I've seen, like there's any number of things that could change by the time we get in here, but people are getting hyped up over the PvP in the Armor Core arena, and I watched PvP battle uh stream which we'll probably watch some of the stuff over this game here in a minute. Um, the PvP stuff on there, I mean, yeah, it, when you look at it, it's you're probably not going to understand exactly what's going on, but when you're an Armor Core pilot and you have a mech that you've customized for your personality and it feels like a part of you and you go into PvP, that's where the that's where I could see the fun being because you're like, testing your mech's metal against other people's, but there's always going to be tryhards on there, and there's always going to be a best build, probably. Um, so I'm not 100% sure how hyped I'm going to be for the Armor Core like multiplayer. I'm going to play it, for sure, but when, you watch, when I watch these streams and these people are getting hyped up over these groups of players, like 3v3 to shooting each other and then getting infinite respawn lives... I don't think they have enough tactics that they're using in their PvP matches for me to really justify it being like a competitive sort of thing. Like, it's more of like a mosh pit of people like rushing in and shooting each other. Um, and that's where it kind of gets into my second point with this game, is I'm going to play it, and it's going to be great, and I love Armor Core. But uh, I think they could do more with the maps. So, like, Armor Core 4 Answer, the maps were, like, destructible. You'd have buildings and stuff that would get destroyed. And, like, in Armor Core 5, there was things that were destructible, but not everything, really. I mean, sort of, kind of. Uh, and I think they're doing that same sort of thing with this game, where the environments aren't really destructible or anything. I see some video clips where, like, there's fights, and you'll see, like buildings or whatever break into like flat squares like they were back on the PlayStation or, or the Xbox and the older games. That's probably my biggest thing with this is like if you're going to do destructible environments and stuff like on the newer stuff, why not just make it look like a really epic or like where you can like drill a hole through a building like, not destroy the whole building, but just, like, make a pathway through the building or something. But my main thing is I would love for them, for the Armor Core series, to make the environment more of, a, like, a tactical element to the game. That's something they haven't did in the games yet that I've seen. Um, but it would be really cool if, while you're fighting or whatever, there's, like, the oil refinery components or like the gas components or EMP things on buildings. And you could bait enemies into that area and kind of use the environment as weapons against them. I think that would be really nice. I don't think we've really seen it anywhere um, that I can really think of in the armor core stuff, but I think the environmental weapon thing would be really good to have in. Uh, I think co-op would be really good. Um, you know, large scale open like battles would be nice, but just a few things. We're gonna we're gonna look over this though, but definitely one of my favorite games and probably one of the only single player games that I'd go out of my way to play at this point. Um, so in a few days we'll probably try to do that.
but the storyline for me see like right here you see this map so like the ground and the rocks and everything are a lot more like they're nice okay but they're still they still got that flat barrenness of like four answer they're not like super overly detailed or anything but they're kind of like nice looking graphics but then you look at like the scaffolding and stuff that's around and that's where i'm like you know i it's fine i like armor core and stuff like that but i feel like you could you could have took it to the next level with the environmental like damage and and buildings and stuff or like these electrical lines like maybe you know you run into them and they do something to your mech Like, the effects and stuff look really good. So, like, the effects and stuff, you can see, like, all of this, the, the energy blasts and all that looks really, really good. But, like, these refinery components and stuff, those are things that we've seen in the games, like, a lot. Like, these are better versions, and we saw an explosion there, so maybe they do damage, I don't know. But it's not, like... A crazy level of detail they still have the same like building breaking apart stuff so hopefully this game does really good because it, I mean they definitely deserve to get some credit for armor core for all the years they've did this and it not like popping off and it's probably partially because they just didn't have a PC element as well but if they if this goes well and they make another one like just I would love to see some more elements in the world that impact the mechs, like like sand or mud or, um, you know, water, metal shrapnel off of buildings, like damaging your mech randomly. Like that kind of stuff would be really cool. Like maybe not fully destructing a building, like you shoot a building, part of it gets blown off and the shrapnel goes out and it hits a mech in the side. And, you know... Like, if you look back, let's say, like, white, like uh, Armor Core for Answer, the battle with White Glint, uh, just think about on that fight, when you had a partner and you are fighting White Glint, and you get, like, halfway through the battle, and your partner gets, like, sinks into the ocean and dies. And it was because, like, White Glint had shot his mech at the beginning of the fight at some point and he had like been taking just like ticking time damage the whole time until his his armor core shut down and then he just drowns underneath the water like that's the kind of stuff that i would love to see like you get into combat and your mech has like a bleed effect on it where like maybe your armor your shield didn't block something and you get hit in the knee and you're like leaking oil so then you're like you have a time limit to finish the mission before you die i think that would be like the next stage of stuff that i would i would like to see in the mech like yeah would it be difficult yes but it also means like all these tiny little bit of little bitty enemies that you face during the whole part of the game that are just kind of like fodder it means like one of them can randomly get a sniper shot off on you and like cause you actual panic in the game, which would be crazy. Watch out. Burn you to ash. Yeah, if the PvP scene pops off on this game, like, I could see definitely competitive stuff going on with mech games. Because 
So I want to go over this real quick. So all these streamers I've seen so far talk about these. Um, I forget what all of them are calling. They're calling them something, but they're called arms forts. These are literally, that's their arms forts. The spirit of Mother Will, all those from the old games. They're always in here, and they're always really, like, huge and, and like, crazy fights. Usually iconic to the games. Um, but I forget what the streamers were calling it, but... Arms Force, man. Like, the landscape of this almost reminds me of, like, Fallout, almost. Like, just the way that the land is. And, like, how it looks. Like, it looks like a Fallout engine or something, almost. I feel like this has to be like a like a starter mech or something though. Because like this arms fort here is not very strong, not seemingly. Like compared to things that we fought in like Four Answer and Verdict Day and stuff, this mech does not seem too impressive. Like this has to be like the starting like oh, this is what these are kind of things, because Spirit of Motherworld would have ran this thing over. Even that, like, armored train car probably would have beat this thing. See how exposed its legs are? Compromised. It's going down. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. All right, now we've got a foothold to get on the deck. Grab on and get to work on the sub generators. You imagine like one leg goes down and this whole thing falls over. That's the other thing I would like to see more of in Armor Core is uh, mech damage. Like, as you're fighting, being able to see, like, physical damage on your mech wounds or, like, losing a limb or something randomly. I think all that would be, like, crazy for, like, a game like this. Like, imagine, like, you're in a fight and you have, like, a, you know, your two Gatling guns or whatever. 
your shields go down, and then you get smacked by something and randomly lose an arm. It'd be crazy. And I would love to see something like that, but yeah. Also generators destroyed. The ice shield is offline. Head to the front segment and hit the target. No repair kits remaining. Like they should let you like uh, up cause avalanches or something. But you see, like a lot of these things you see in the older games too, like these big factory zones with the bit the things. It just we've seen a lot, and I would like for these things to have a bigger impact when you shoot them or whatever on the map, like massive explosions or EMP fields that fry people's shields for a certain period of time or you know flames or like an avalanche coming off or you know maybe there's like a a missile or something that randomly goes off in the background who knows follow the markers and your mech is a lot smaller this time around too Probably not smaller than five, though. Registration number RB23. Rank fits the bill. Call sign. Looks like they were onto you after all. The bigger fight than the PCA. But it doesn't matter. Take it out now, and they won't have enough to ID you. Explosions on the ground. 
like people rely on their sword too much. My mech in these games that always ends up being very similar. I make big bipedal mechs that are super heavy with really powerful boosters and uses a lot of Gatling guns. But on this game, they have a shield now that you can put on your shoulder. I probably would do that. You see, like, you can tell the, the graphics and stuff look better and everything. Like, it's definitely a newer game. But when you see things get destroyed, they look like how things were old. Like, they just, like, these little thin pieces of, like, pictures, like, falling over and stuff. So like here's the main thing with the armor core stuff that you got to realize like the missions like this never really, you know, got me that much just running around shooting random stuff. But what you pay attention to is the things that the people are saying. Like they say stuff about your mech or someone else's mech or something about the storyline or some sort of comment while you're doing the missions and it's like yeah, you're, like, shooting stuff, and it's not, like, super crazy, but you're also getting these, like, small details to piece the story together. And then later on, if they have multiple endings, it's like, oh, there's, like, parts. Like, you'll be like, oh, that's why they said that later. Like, that's what they meant while you're doing it, like, when you replay the next time. And that's, like, pretty cool. So if you like storylines, for sure, I think this game's great. See, we couldn't hear all of it right there, but you see, like, that dude's trying to reason with you. He's like, because he's like, oh, man, you're so awesome. Why do you serve these corporations that just kill or whatever? And then, like, later on, you might come back through the story and be able to be on their side and be like, oh, these corporations are killing innocents or whatever. 
and so you end up fighting the corporations or you'll come back through and you'll you'll play like a whole different faction from either of these guys and you'll be like well both of those guys are doing messed up stuff and we're doing messed up stuff too but we're trying to actually save everybody on earth and like these other people might be trying to like just live life normally as their own existence like that was a big deal with some of the older games where it was like you'd be playing the mission and they'd be telling you that people were bad and you got to do what they say and you basically fight them and then you would come back later and get the like the second playthrough and then you get to like play through the game and kind of see some of the other side of things fighting back and then you would get to see like the big bad boss guys afterwards and like your third playthrough you'd be able to play as one of the big bads and then you'll realize like oh like on one hand we could try and save everybody that's alive now and keep them safe and that's moral and good because you're keeping innocence you know alive and then on the other hand they'll be like oh well like these people that are up here using these resources are actually the high class people that you know, they don't care about any of the people stuck on the ground that are slowly dying and suffering, you know, and they're using all the energy that we need to a access something greater for all of humanity. Like, there'll be, like, some stuff like that, and that's where you get those moral dilemmas that really pull you in. And like the mechs customization and stuff. I'll be back here in a minute. But these things, uh, man, like customizing your mech is probably one of the coolest things to make your, your mech your own. The decals and stuff are what really sells it and the color schemes. Um, but like when I think of the Armor Core game, like just general gameplay and like missions and stuff. They're not, like, super crazy, but, like, what is really good is, like, the boss fights. The boss fights and the storyline, they sell it. And everything else is just kind of filler things that kind of, like, use your ammunition or weaken you a bit before the big fight. Like, the missions themselves are pretty straightforward for the most part. Um, kind of like if you play Warframe or whatever. Um, they're pretty straightforward. But the thing is, is, like... You get, it's kind of also part of it where it's like, do you want to try and rush through all of those weaker enemies at the beginning of the game and then be weaker when you go to fight the boss towards the end? Or do you want to like slow play those enemies at the beginning of the game and then get to fight the boss as strong as you can be at the end? It's kind of that kind of toss-up where like you'll play a mission and you'll be like your third playthrough or something, and you're just like, man, I'm going to bulldoze these guys. And then you get to the end, and you have like half your ammo that you normally would, or like 20% less HP than you normally would. And then they'll like have a similar boss that you fought before, and you'll finally beat them. And then like, there'll be like an additional side event that happens directly after that, where there's like, oh, you beat that one mech that you remember beating before? Well, now there's three more mechs coming in, full HP, and you're sitting there like, God, I, I started the fight with less HP than I had and less ammo, and I barely have anything left. And now I have to fight, like, a whole squad by myself. Like, that's the stuff that gets you. But, like, you'll fight those guys, and then you'll either die or you'll win. But, like, when you actually get the win against crazy odds like that, it makes you feel important and good. Which is what makes, like, the mech thing. So, because, like, by the time your mech is fully finished... You're like, God dang, I'm a badass. Like, everything that I have did, all those, like, challenges that I just, like, steamroll people, you know, number one of the leaderboard, that's the stuff that makes you feel real good. And then later on, like, down the road, you're like, man, I really want to go back and, like, get in my mech again. They have reflectiveness and stuff on here, so it's going to be drastic changes. It 
See, my colors were always black and red, and then, like, I did the white glint thing, and I did black glint at one point. But I kind of, you know, sometimes I think maybe I should change my color schemes up, but black and red has always been, like, my thing, you know? And Gatling guns. So they got some ways to change it. Great execution with the low spreads and the least amount of slippage possible. I like the way that they've done what they've done. I am really liking this prop firm and the transparency with payouts. The trading conditions offered in the MetaTrader are just amazing. Yeah, that doesn't sound sketchy at all. I like the like worn down rusty looks that you can get, but It almost seems like a bit too clean, kind of. Like the mechs seem almost a little bit too clean. My thing too is like, so they have the energy shield that you can get on your shoulder now. And the blade is attached to your left hand. You can't dual wield them anymore, I guess. But I would really love for these guys to add in, like, a physical shield that you can hold in your left hand and then, like, an actual sword in your right, you know? So you play, like, just as a physical sword shield mech. I would do it. Like, some shoulder weapons. Like, used to in the old games, I would have a bipedal and I would keep a sword in my leg. So once I ran out of ammo, I'd have one final weapon. See, like, that mech right there has a metal shield. See, it looks like these boss battles are more bossy than they are, like, mechy, if that makes any sense, you know? Because, like, in the old games, like, the mech boss fights were, like, fast-paced, like, targeted shooting, going through the buildings, like, these charged attacks that would do a crazy bunch of damage. But these are, like, really big and kind of blocky moving, which feels a little weird to me. Like, it's more like the end boss or whatever on Verdict Day, you know? Yeah. 
See, they say that you can only get four weapons on this one, so I'm guessing they removed the hanger weapon that you can have on your leg. And if that's the case, I'm a little sad about it. I feel like I'm probably, if you can't get four Gatling guns in this game, then I'll probably go two Gatling guns on the arms, and then a shield, and a, uh, like a powerful hitting weapon on my shoulder. They got these big pauldron looking arms that you can get, but they don't have a metal shield. That's just weird to me. It's like if I if I was gonna make a big heavy melee, I'll go like metal shield with electric shield shoulder on the left side, and then a sword, and then like a Gatling gun or something.
See, like, just imagine fighting in something like this. Like, right here, the shield breaks, and he just got smacked by a barrage of, like, I don't know, bullets or rockets or something. And just imagine if that, like, took a limb off or, like, made you start bleeding out, like, your mech, like, taking damage over time. It'd be huge. Damage of thrusters. That's my thing, is these repair kits are going to bother me, because uh, in the old games, you, you didn't have repair kits, so like part of me is like, I know I'm going to want to to z like zero-use repair kits this game, but I just don't know if it's going to be possible. Like a dog out there. On design, consider it a privilege to be called to participate. You will be attacking the Wall, a key trading outpost fortified by the Rubicon Liberation Front. The rabble have formed a defensive line comprised of artillery and MT squads. Break through the line, then make your way to the top of the Wall. There you shall find the Juggernaut, a mobile heavy artillery platform. Destroy it. V4 will also be participating in this mission, infiltrating through a separate route. However, be aware that Balaam has also taken a crack at the wall, only for their vainglorious hopes to be dashed. Do try not to die like a dog out there. objective is to take the Liberation Front Fortress, the Wall. Show them you're worth the credits, 621. We're going to be uh, buying that for sure. We're playing it. We're getting it. Hopefully um, it goes well 
and maybe I'll get into the PvP aspect of it, but hopefully they'll make more Armor Core games and then approve even more what they did, because this seems more, you know, it's better than it was, but it doesn't seem like they fully went all out to make, like, something super crazy, so I'm on the fence in it. Still going to probably be a really good game, but I, I feel like there's potential missing here. Um, but we'll see. We got like three or four days before we can play it, I think. So hopefully it comes all right. Y'all guys can watch if y'all want. And uh, thank y'all for stopping by.